Hey guys, so today we are going to go over um, the National Real Estate Exam acronym. So these are things that you guys want to remember. These are things that you're going to see on the test when it comes to the national portion, regardless which state that you're doing it for the nationals, the national. Okay. So I want you to know some of these acronyms. A lot of these acronyms you will see on your regular state tests as well, but I just want to make sure you know it. Okay. So let's dive in. So we're going to go right into them. So the first one is going to be deep C. So when you see deep C, that is the bundle of rights. So on the left-hand side, you see that there's a picture of sticks. Those sticks is ones that you want to remember. I don't know how you guys were in class, but I know with some classes, what they do is they will show you, take the sticks out, and they will show you that each stick represent a bundle, okay? So when you see deep C, know that's the bundle of right. So if they ask a question like, which one is not a bundle of right? or which one does not belong, you would know what it is because you would clearly use deep C, okay? So deep C is clearly disposition, which is the right to transfer ownership, either permanent or temporarily. So that means that I look at it, how I always remember it is I can dispose it. It's mine. If I want to put it in the trash and if I want to give it to a friend, it could be disposed. That's how I remember disposition definition. All right. Enjoyment, the right to enjoy the property. That means you could do whatever you want on the property. You can enjoy it. That's pretty simple. Um, exclusion, the right to exclude others from entering the property. So when I see exclusion, I always hear get off my land. I mean, get off my land. So I'm saying it again. So that way, when you see exclusion, you hear me saying, get off my land. That means I have the right to exclude, exclusion, others from entering the property. Okay. Possession, the right to live on the property. So possession, you know, that can deal with when it comes to leaseholds and renters and things like that. That's when you're going to get into possession. Okay. Um, because you can have possession but that doesn't mean you have the full bundle of rights, okay? So that's what possession is saying that you can live on the property. Control is the right to build, modify, destroy, rent the property to another. So you can do however you want. You have the control, okay? So remember, disposition is to dispose, throw away. You can transfer it. You can put it in a dumpster. You can give it to somebody else. Enjoyment is to enjoy. Ex exclusion is get off my land. So I can exclude you or include you on this land, all right? Possession and control. So when you see deep sea, know that that's the bundle of rights. Yep. I see your question. Good job. Yep. 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 So you will see that. So if you see some that says disposition, enjoyment, um, possession and, um, conclusion, you know, that's not right. You know, conclusion is not one or area, you know, that's not right because it's D E E P C is deep C. Okay. So pit, so pit is a good one. This may answer your question, Sarah, about, about this one. So a lot of people get the Tennessee in common confused with joint Tennessee. This solves that for you. So I always like to look at it as where's Brad? All right, where is Brad? When I see joint Tennessee, where is Brad in this situation? Where is Brad Pitt? So our acronym for this is gonna be Pitt, P-I-T-T. -T. So anytime you see joint Tennessee and it says, possession, interest, title, time, you know that that is pit and that is automatically joint tenancy. If it say that they, because with, with joint tenancy, with possession, they all have equal possession. The interest, all they, they all have equal ownership. So if you see that it's not equal, you know that for I, the interest is equal ownership. So you would know that clearly that's not joint tendency. All right. So anytime you see joint tendency, guys, think of where is Brad Pitt, because the P-I-T-T -T is what you're going to need to know when you see joint tendency so you can remember it. Okay. So possession, interest, time, title. Got it? Good. Yep, 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 yep. Old car. Old car is a good one. So when you're dealing with fiducial duties, you want to remember old car. So old car is simple. Obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, accounting, and reasonable care. So if you want to know about fiducial duties of what you owe, Okay, so this is your client. What you owe, remember old car. You at least have to give them old 
car. If you don't have fiduciary duties, then you may be giving them dad or something, which is disclose. You have to disclose all material facts, accounting. But when what we're talking and asking here is fiduciary duties. So when it comes to fiduciary duties, remember old car obedience. I will obey. I will follow your lawfully um, things that you ask. Now, if you ask me, hey, don't disclose the roof, I have to do that. So I can only abide by your lawfully things that you, as long as it's lawful. So obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, accounting, and reasonable care, that is old car. Yep. Good, good, good. I'm reading the comments. Let me check over here. All right, good. You guys are good. We're moving pretty fast. But these are things that you just want to remember. Go back over it. Just remember. So old car is what? Fiditual duties. Yes. Old, O, obedience. L, loyalty. D, disclosure. C, confidentiality. A, accounting. R, reasonable care. Very good, guys. So this is my favorite one. When it comes to adverse possession, ocean. All right. I like to look at it as ocean. So with ocean, O is for open. C is for continuous. E is for exclusive. A is adverse or actual. And N is notorious. OK, so this allows a person to acquire title of land owned by someone else if all these requirements are met. And the legal requirements are these. So if I've been doing it out in the open, I've been cutting this grass, not secretive, but I've been cutting this grass out in the open for seven, eight, for it's eight years or whatever. I've been continuously doing it. So I'm not privately doing it. Y'all see that I'm doing it. You drive by, see that I'm doing it. It's continuous, you know, it's exclusive, it's notorious. That is when you would know adverse possession. So when you guys see ocean or they asking about adverse possession or they ask john has been cutting this grass or john has been using this yard for over eight years continuously this is an example of what ocean all right so remember ocean open continuous exclusive adverse or actual i always say adverse possession but some people when they see actual they get confused because they don't see adverse so just say adverse actual and then notorious okay all right, we're doing good, guys. We're doing good. So, Fair Housing Protection Class. So, the 1866 is the Civil Rights Act, and then the 1968 is what? That is the Fair Housing Act, so don't get them confused. No, 1866 is the Civil Rights Act, and 1968 is the Fair Housing Act. How I remember those dates is 18 is... 18 and then you got 19 so 1866 i always say c comes before f in the alphabet so when i see 1866 i always know it's c which is civil rights if i see 1968 i automatically know it's fair because it's not c it's because c is what civil rights of 1866 okay so that is what you guys want to remember when it comes to the dates i just want to put that out there so 1866 is what Yep, civil rights, because C, it comes before F. 18 is way before, so we're going to put 18 and C together. Does that make sense? And then 1968 is the Fair Housing Act. So when it comes to fair housing protection, you want to remember fresh corn. All right? I don't care how you have to, you want to remember fresh corn, okay? So fresh corn is familiar status, race, ethnicity, sex, Handicap or disability, C is for color, N is for national origin, O is for opportunity, equal rights, and R is for religion. So when you see something in regards to does this qualify in the fair housing, is, is handicap? Yes, because if you're talking about fair housing, it's fresh corn. So handicap or disability will be in there. This person is buying a property. They are an agent. Can they, um, can they dismiss somebody because of their race? Or can they dismiss somebody because of their origin? No, because it is under 
fresh corn. So anytime you see, know these acronyms for fresh corn because any question that they throw at you, it doesn't matter how they try to confuse you. You know when you see ethnicity, nope, they cannot because it's fresh corn. It is under a protective class, okay? So remember when you see fresh corn, familiar status, yep, R is for race, E is for ethnicity, S is for sex, H is for handicap or disability, color, national origin, opportunity equal, and religion. Very good. Very good, guys. Very good. You're doing good. We're moving along. Dust. Now, I say dust. Some people say stud. So if you see it as stud and you know it as stud, that's perfectly fine. I always say dust. I say when it comes to four elements of value, the value is kind of dusty. So to me, it's dust. I just remember dust off gate. Some people, again, like I said, like to say stud. But when it comes to dust, dust is simply D is for demand. U is for utility. S is for scarcity. And T is transferable. So demand is when, yes, uh uh-huh. Yep, yep, you're right. You're on the right path. So demand is when the demand is high and the value increase. All right. Utility is when how the property can be utilized. So how the property can be used, all right? Um, Scarcity is fewer comparable properties, the higher the value. And T is transferable. So it must transfer to have a clear title. That's what those means. You wanna know the definition of it, but if you can't remember off the top of your head, you can remember dust. And you remember dust, demand, yep scarcity correct yes so that's how you want to do it as soon as you see it go ahead and put that in order and i believe that you can know what it means you would transferability you know must transfer it's in the, the the word of what it means is in the definition demand is demand you see what i'm saying for for the you you know how can, the property can be used so you and you you know so you guys that's i don't think you will have a problem with that but that is dust or stud. Like I said, I do dust, but if you have seen other places stud, you can use that as well. So we are almost done here. Um, So just quick reminder, you do have the option of getting a cram test. So the cram test, if you go to close it like Rawls at close it like Rawls.myspotshopify.com, you'll be able to have access to the cram test. The cram test consists of 60 questions um, on it. That's going to be on the test, math and regular questions. Um, the majority of it, like definitely if you're in Florida, you definitely want to get the cram test um, because that's mainly for you guys. Um, I would say if you want to see more videos, I try to I put some out. Um, like, for instance, with this, I am recording this. So if you guys miss anything, I will go ahead and put it in on. Um, I would upload it. So feel free to like and subscribe. Check other videos. We do have a math videos. Let me know, please, when you guys pass. I love, please don't stop it. I love getting the notifications and you guys reaching out telling me that you pass and these acronyms and things help. Um, so just please continue to let me know. And congratulations to everyone that just took the test or that's going to take the test this week. I congratulate you. I know you're going to do good. Um, but yes, that's that. So let's go back into it. So when it comes to money, Money is some certain things that you want to remember. So EDM. So EDM is simply um, what? What does that stand for? So EDM simply stands for earnest money deposit. So earnest money deposit is what you're going to see, period. Does not matter the state you're in. One thing I want you guys to know, because a lot of people get confused when it comes to earnest money deposit, if a sales associate or agent gets earnest money deposit, when is that money due? When is it due to the, um, because some firms hold earnest money, but for the most part, it goes to the attorney or the title company. That money is due immediately. But like what some people I have noticed that gets confused is, is due immediately, but five days. And when people see five days, they're like, okay, Saturday, Sunday. No, when you see earnest money, remember business, banking, okay? I know it's weird, but earnest money, when you hear it, business, banking, 
That basically means that it is business banking days. So when you see earnest money, earnest money is due. Earnest money is five days, but it's five business banking days. Meaning that if it's President's Day, that day doesn't count. If it's a Saturday and Sunday, that day doesn't count as well. So earnest money is five banking business days. Okay. I uh, know, I know it's a, it's, 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 a, it's crazy, but I'm telling you, you guys are going to remember this just like you're going to remember, get off my lawn, you know? So earnest money is how many days? Five banking, five business. So five BB days. All right. And then if you guys see due diligence, due diligence is definitely one that's in North Carolina. That's not going to be on everybody's test. Um, but when it comes to due diligence, due diligence is due immediately. So as soon as you go on a contract is due immediately, but no later than five days. That is calendar days. So the holiday counts, Saturday and Sunday counts. So DD is due diligence. But the main thing for the national, which you guys want to remember is EMD due immediately, but within, but no later within five b -b -b banking b -b -b business days. All right. Almost done. Okay, guys. So now we're talking about valid contracts. So when it comes to valid contracts, I want you guys to remember clap. So when you see valid contracts, go ahead and clap. All right. So it's important to remember that if one of these are missing, that the contract is voided. So when it comes to valid contracts, how do you know it's a valid contract? Because consideration, legal purpose, agreement of the parties and parties must be competent. So in order to see a valid contract, when it comes to contract, it doesn't matter how they throw the question at you. It doesn't matter how they hit you. If they if there is consideration, legal purpose, agreement of the parties that's meetings of the mind okay or parties must be competent that is clap so when you see a valid contract valid contract must have what you must be able to clap all right you see valid contract if you got to sit there and clap go ahead and clap at least you know what it means what gets recorded so this is my favorite one i love dream oil i love remembering it this way, dream oil is what gets recorded. So if you need to know what's get re recorded, it's going to be deed, restricted covenant, covenant, easement, assignment, mortgage, mor mortgage, yeah, mortgage, options, installment, lease of three years. Okay. So what doesn't get recorded is independent contract agreement. Now, sidebar, North Carolina people, you have the Connor Act. So with the Connor Act, you have all of this. OK, you have all of this for the Connor Act. However, when it comes to statute of frauds, this is everybody. When it comes to statute of frauds, you're going to have to have use dream oil plus the sales contract. So when it comes to statute of frauds and they say statute of frauds, what what's in in statute of frauds or what's needed? It will be dream oils because it's deed restricted covenant easement assignment mortgage option installment lease of three plus years and sales contracts okay so just make sure you guys know that this is what dream oil is what needs to be recorded but dream oils is for statute of frauds if they ask what documents are considered in statute of frauds so personal property personal property is anything that's nailed screwed or glued all right so if it's the tv I want you guys to tell me, is a TV personal property and versus um, the thing that the TV sit on? What's your thoughts? Okay, so just think about it. So when it comes to personal property, it has to be nailed in, screwed in, or glued. When it comes to the TV, you could take the TV off the mount. So the TV is not per the TV is considered personal property. It doesn't run with the land. But when it comes to the mount, the mount is screwed in. So the mount is going to run with the land. So the TV again, it comes off is personal property. The mount is screwed in. So anything that's nailed, screwed, and glued, remember that is personal property. Peat. Peat is another one. So government property. So when it comes to government government property, you want to remember peat. So P is for police powers. E is for intimate domain, T is for taxation, and E is for a cheat. So you need four powers that the government hold over your property. So when it comes to can they take this, is it intimate domain, remember peaked. 
these things, P-E-T-E, what each one stand for is one that you would know, yes, it's intimate domain. Yes, taxation. That means real estate taxes. They can't take the E cheat. So you guys will know what that is. All right. So remember government properties is what? Peaked. Yep. Good job, Jessica. Jessica said when she see the P in power, she always the power reminds her of Pete. So so good. P and P. All right. So these are other acronyms that I want you guys to know. So when it comes to amendment, amendment means to change. So when you have a contract, that means to change the contract versus addendum means to add something to the contract excuse me fellas for this but this is a great way to remember this if you want to know you get confused with amendment and addendum just remember for amendment that men change so a men men change men is not consistent they change i know it i know fellas i'm just trying to give an example so when i see amendment i know men change so that's how you know that you can make changes to the document because men change. That's what amendment is. Versus addendum is to add something. The ADD is to add something of the contract. So it's not going to be a whole separate thing. You're adding something to the contract. So again, add or change. What's the difference? Amendment is men change. So that means you're changing something to the contract. Versus addendum is to add something to the contract. We have Maria. So when it comes to Maria, Maria is the fixture test. So this describes whether it's personal or if it's real property is going to transfer. So with Maria, it's method. It's A, yep, mm -hmm, yep, relationship. Good job. Intentions and agreement. So anytime you want to know the fixture test, is this going to run with it, this whatever, always remember Maria. All right, guys, we're almost done. So property tax math. So when it comes to pro property tax, remember T-A-R. T is at the top for taxes. A is for assessment. R is for rate. This is when you're using the T-chart. So you will always put the tax at the top, the assessment, the rate. If you know the tax and the assessment, you know what that you're going to put the tax at the top and the assessment. And you're going to divide the top and the bottom to figure out what the rate is. If you have the assessment and you have the rate, but you don't have the tax, you're going to say A, assessment times the rate is going to give you what the tax is. So remember when some people don't know how to plug in on the T-chart, when you're using the T-chart, just put T-A-R and that's how you would do it. We're almost done, guys. So acres. So when and it comes to acres, acres is 43,560. So the way to remember that is four old ladies drive 35 miles miles per hour. That's what I say. But some people have to look at it as four old ladies drive 35 miles per hour in a 60 60 zone. So if you can't remember per hour is 60 and you have to say in a 60 zone, same thing. But four old ladies drive 35 miles per hour. I write it like that. Four old ladies drive 35 miles per hour, 4356. All right. Don't overthink it. When it comes to miles, miles is five tomatoes. Okay. Miles is five tomatoes. Get it? Five tomatoes. Five two eight toe. Five two eight toe. Five two eight toe. So miles is five two eight toe. I cannot remember miles alone unless I am saying five tomatoes. Okay. And again, if you slow it down, five two eight toes. Five two eight oh. Five tomato. See what I'm saying? Five to eight. So that's what it is when it comes to miles. So acres is four old ladies drive 35 miles per hour. And then miles is five tomatoes, five to eight. All right. So I want to thank you guys for watching. We went through that really, really fast. I wanted to do this lunch break acronym for you guys because I know some of you guys have to go to work or looking at it from work. So it's okay. I don't want you to get in trouble. So I want to go ahead and share this with you. But thank you for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe so that way you can see more videos. If there's anything that you need me to go over, please let me know when it comes to acronyms or if it comes to I'm having a hard time remember this let me know I would be more than happy to share it because I'm sure you're not the only person that has that question reach out for any questions if you have any questions please feel free to go to info at rawsandassociates.com when it comes to what to do after you pass or fingerprints anything whatever it is we are here to assist and Florida guys if you need the cram test we do have it at that site so thank you guys i wish you all a wonderful day remember five tomatoes remember 
Uh, four old ladies driving 35 miles per hour. Maria, remember that men change or to add something. Um, and nail screwed or glued, whatever that is. I hope this guys, I hope this helped you. Um, and y'all have a wonderful day. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this because I know we wanted to run through it for lunch break. If you guys have any questions, reach out to me. Let me know. Y'all have a great day. Congratulations to everyone taking the test. Bye bye.